Hello everyone and welcome back to my kitchen and my home. So excited to be back making a video for you guys. This is a little different than my voiceovers and cozy. I wanted to actually talk to you guys and show you what I do with Thanksgiving leftovers, really any holiday leftovers. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that and just talk to you about our new move and everything that's going on. So I just wanted to update you guys a little bit. Um, we've been remodeling our home for the last, I'm, I'm thinking four months now. We moved to the upper peninsula of Michigan on just a little under 20 acres and we completely gutted this house. And we are in the process of making this kitchen just kind of like my dream cottage kitchen. And it's unfinished. You're gonna be seeing parts of it that are not done, the windows aren't finished, not all the sheetrock is done, the shelves are uh, not all up, but this is the reality and it's just our cozy kitchen. We're getting things done and we're taking you guys along on the journey. I wanted to share with you guys what I do with leftovers and this can be done for Thanksgiving leftovers, which is what I have right here, Christmas leftovers, Easter leftovers, any leftovers, Sunday dinner leftovers. But because turkey produces a lot of extra meat when you're having a big dinner, if you haven't eaten it all up, you can make two really nice big meals out of that turkey dinner by making a pot pie. And this is like a pot pie casserole. And I don't know if you've ever tried this, but I haven't actually seen many people make this. So I'm excited to share it with you. And you really almost don't need a recipe for this, but I'm gonna just kind of walk you through it and then I will put the real recipe in the description below, but just kind of walk through how easy this is and a go-to for any time you have extra potatoes, vegetables, and meat, you can make this delicious casserole. So I'm gonna share the recipe with you guys, but I first wanna ask you guys a question and that is, do you guys still use recipe cards? If you still use recipe cards, leave a comment below. Leave a comment if you don't. I still have recipe cards that I wrote when I was 15 years old, when before I was married, when I was just a school kid. I used to write down recipes that my, my mom gave me, my grandma gave me, and my great grandma gave me. And I'm gonna show you guys my recipe box. Please don't judge me on this. This is a old recipe box it is filthy we have camped we have moved and i really need to get a new one but it's hard because it's also kind of nostalgic to me but i really need to just do it and get a new one so i'm going to show you guys the box lid doesn't even have a hinge anymore this is actually made out of paper i got this when i was so young um, i think it was like 14 years old when i actually got this originally so, but like here is the cutest pot pie recipe here. My mom wrote this down for me actually, that's her. But uh, yeah, I have so many different ones. Friends have given me over the years when I got married, I had people hand write recipes for me. I have scraps of paper, um, you know, it's just a little of everything in here. And a lot of them are my favorites. And, you know, I have <laughs> dilly beans. Oh, I love those, the canned dilly beans. Um, my pizza dough recipe that is on the blog. And so many recipes that are actually in my cookbook. I just wanna go over this recipe with you guys and just kind of talk it through what I'm doing. And then I'll also have it written in the comments or not actually the com description below. So after having our turkey this weekend, which was delicious, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving for everybody that celebrates Thanksgiving. I have two bags of meat left, Ziploc bags. And uh, I even put gravy in this one, leftover gravy, because this one is gonna go into the pot pie and this one is gonna go into the soup. So I basically, this is such an easy recipe. I kind of like to, either you make your own gravy or save gravy um, from any recipe that you have. And I put my gravy and my meat together, chop it up, put it in a bowl. These are leftover veg right here. And um, I'm gonna just mix up veg, this leftover meat, gravy, 
and mashed potatoes. Now you can also chop up potatoes and carrots and root vegetables and you could steam them or boil them and then you could you know season them and then add chicken and make your own roux or you could add a, your own gravy and then you could put all that together with extra vegetables like corn and beans whatever you like or even roasted brussels sprouts mix it all together and then you make the top crust and today the top crust that i'm going to make is actually gonna be on a gluten-free flour, but it works with either or. It works great and it's so good. You will love this recipe. It's easy and it's a favorite among the kids. And I'm just cutting this up so it's not in huge chunks. And it has gravy on it, so it's a little messy. You know, I don't always recommend doing that, but my fridge was so full, I couldn't even put the gravy anywhere else. As you can see, there's some gravy in here, so I'm not gonna make gravy for this. It's all kind of intertwined. Don't forget, you can get your hands dirty. It's just cooking and easy to clean up. I'm actually gonna put this in with the vegetables right here. These are just some frozen vegetables I had in my freezer. One of my favorite things uh, to do is take mashed potatoes in this recipe because, you know, sometimes you don't know what to do with uh, leftover mashed potatoes after you've had several, you know, plates of warmed up leftovers and you still have these potatoes. And this is a perfect way to turn this into another meal. You know, just all a big blob of potatoes and I just kind of break it up a little bit and then I'm gonna Put it together and one of the things that I like to do and remember when I'm making this is all you need is vegetables meat potatoes and a binder and the binder can be gravy it can be cheese sauce it can be a homemade um, white sauce whatever to just bind that all together make it creamy and delicious and then you make this really great cut crust which is super easy and pourable and I can't wait to show you. Okay, let's put the potatoes in now. So this is full. You should see, check this out. I mean, this is a full bowl and I'm gonna double the topping recipe because this is huge. This is gonna make a massive, big pot pie casserole. Something that's really fun too is to add your leftover stuffing, you know, any sauteed vegetables you had. You know, we ate up our stuffing and extra veg real fast, so I definitely um, just used frozen vegetables to mix in this time, which that works too. Especially after you've done a ton of baking, it's really nice to do something maybe a little bit easier. And you know, you can do it to the ratio you like. This is, um, I might actually have to take some of this out and put it in another pan because I don't even have enough room to do crust. So I'm gonna have to probably do two batches. Now here you could start adding like sage or thyme and spices and, but since all this is my Thanksgiving stuff, everything's pretty seasoned. So I'm actually just gonna salt and pepper it and call it good. Um, the gravy is super flavorful. The turkey, the potatoes, you know. Um, but any flavors that you really like. You could also saute um, onions and garlic and put this in, which that is really good too. 
Again, I'm just using leftovers because I didn't want to do any actual cooking to this. I just wanted to only use leftovers. I wanted to show you how I didn't have to go any, to any extra work really. Just a quick way to feed your family something warm and cozy and good for you after the holidays. I needed a coffee break, so I'm heating up coffee really quick from my coffee press. Ooh, hot. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna do the topping now. This is so fun here. We have got a cup of butter because we're gonna have to make crust for this huge casserole. And I don't know if it will cover that one too. That's just an afterthought. I might have to make extra. But you're just gonna take a cup of butter and you're gonna melt this. And while this is melting on the stove, okay, so I'm going to use a double of this recipe, and I'm using, whew this gluten-free flour here so my daughter can eat it too. Now, it, this recipe works perfect with all-purpose flour, but I need to use a gluten-free flour in this instance. All right, so we're gonna put two cups, two cups of flour. So I've got two cups of flour in here and I'm gonna use three teaspoons of baking powder. and a teaspoon of salt. I'm using a pink Himalayan that I love to use. So this is the dry ingredients with basically flour, baking powder, salt. So I just like to take a little blender here and blend up all the dry ingredients. And then I'm just going to add the two cups of milk. Yep, I just add it all together. Then I'm gonna grab the vinegar and I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vinegar. This is kind of like a baking soda oop, biscuit type topping. There. And the next thing I do is I'm gonna blend it a little bit and then add the butter, the melted butter and some pepper and we have a beautiful topping for this casserole. This is so easy and it does not take very long to make.
Almost looks like a pancake batter. It smells delicious. And I always like to add pepper to this. Yeah, good amount. And then you're just gonna add this to your casserole. And you have yourself a pot pie casserole. And I'm gonna tell you, this crust turns out so airy and crunchy and delicious, and it gets eaten up super fast. You're gonna bake this at 375 for 45 minutes and we will put this aside and bake it in a little while for dinner. So this actually looks like mashed potatoes almost on top, but when it bakes, it gets so deliciously crispy and brown and one, um, double batch was perfect for this huge, huge casserole. This is larger than a nine by 13. I'm not exactly sure the size, but I need now to make an extra little bit of crust for this one. So I'll probably half or quarter the recipe and do that for this one. So a little surprise to myself when I was pulling up the carcass because I just froze it in this pot just for like one day while I was in the in-between and I got it in the crock pot or the Instapot and I'm going to make broth with it. But when I lifted it up, there was a still stuffing and delicious gelled um, gravy juices and some turkey left. And, you know, some people might look at that and go, oh, that's, you know, gross or whatever but this is so much flavor this leftover stuffing leftover meat i could make another pot pie out of this i could make pie crust and add some delicious steamed vegetables and carrots and it would make the most delicious pie in fact i'm very tempted to do that i'm thinking i might whip up some crust and put this in and add a lot of goodies to it and then freeze the pie in the freezer for a pot pie and um, have another meal. So really after having this huge, you know, it was a 20 something pound turkey. We have now two casseroles, one like one and a half casseroles and we have all the makings for a delicious soup here. And then we have enough ingredients right here, leftovers to make another pot pie. So I just really, really am trying to hit this home that you guys can take leftovers and really, really make them spread into delicious meals for your family.
I'm not even going to put celery and onion in it because there was leftovers of the stuffing in there and there's already a ton of flavor. So I love my Instapot. It is so easy to make broth. Um, if you don't have one, I actually highly recommend you looking into getting one. They're so easy. Um, but if you don't, you can always do it on the stovetop all day long, just to slow simmer, get that broth all beautiful. I like it because I can literally take bones and I just put mine on pressure cooker on um, high for two hours and I have a beautiful broth to make soup with. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, things online, different um, methods, but I find this to be good for me and it makes a really nice broth. There you go. And then I just let it natural release. And when I'm ready, I just pour it into the thing, the pot and make my soup and add all the ingredients and it's ready to go. Make sure it's on 